Hello and welcome back to No Calc. This is the second of a three-part series on proving that e to the x is its own derivative. In the last video, we proved that if a function is equal to its own derivative, then that function must be part of a family, which we called f of functions, which had to be either just the function 0 or some set of constant multiples of an exponential, which we called alpha to the x. In this video, we'll be going over properties of the logarithm function, the natural logarithm function, in particular that its derivative is 1 over x, and we will be proving that, there I that such an alpha does exist, thus showing that this case of it being 0 is impossible. Let's get started. We'll go through this proof by going first forwards and then backwards. We'll first sh explain what will happen if such a number e to the for e to the x exists that is equal to its derivative. We'll look at its inverse function, the natural logarithm, and we'll determine that its derivative must be 1 over x. Using that, we'll turn our work around and work backwards. So, in order to prove that e to the x exists, we'll look at the integral of 1 over x, then look at the prove that it's invertible and look at its inverse and show that it is equal to its derivative and that it's non-zero, thus proving that there is some value e so that e to the x is its own derivative. We will start by looking at what must happen in order for e to the x to exist. Let's start by looking at what possible values that we could have for e. Since we don't know what e is yet, let's first notice that e must be positive. Otherwise, if e to the x is negative, then it will not be a continuous function. In fact, it won't be defined at all. For instance, if e was equal to negative 1, then we would have that e to the 1 half would be equal to an imaginary number, which is going to be a problem. So therefore, we are going to, if it exists, it must be greater than or equal to 0. If e is between 0 and 1, then we end up getting an issue because our function e to the x will be decreasing over time. In particular, e to the 0 will be equal to 1, while e to the 1st is going to be equal to e. Therefore, if we look at the slope over this period, we get the slope to be e minus 1 over 1, and if e is less than or equal to 1, this will be less than or equal to 0. However, this is impossible because this would imply that this is the derivative of some number c between 0 and 1. But then f prime of c is equal to f of c, which means that we'll have a non-positive number e to the c, which is a contradiction because it must always be positive. Now, let's look at the inverse function, the natural log of x. Since we know that e is greater than 1, we know that e to the x is going to be a strictly increasing function due to its being an exponential greater than 1, and so we can take its logarithm, which we'll call the natural log of x. Next, we will show that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, as we expect. Now let's prove that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. If we look at the equation, the natural log of e to the x, we see that they are inverses, and so this is going to be equal to x. If we take a derivative of this equation, we're going to see that by taking the chain rule, we get that the derivative of the natural log function of e to the x times the derivative of e to the x is going to be equal to 1. Now, since we're supposing that e to the x is its own derivative, we're going to notice that this is going to be equal to e to the x, and so we get that the natural log, the derivative of the natural log of e to the x is equal to 1 over e to the x. Furthermore, this shows if we let y equal e to the x, which is bigger than 0, which can be any number bigger than 0, we get that the derivative of the natural log function of y is equal to 1 over y, which is what we want to show. 
Now, let's use our intuition behind why the derivative must be 1 over x and work backwards. So, for the next part of this solution, we will look at the integral of 1 over x and then look at its inverse. We'll show that that inverse function is equal to its derivative, thus showing that there's a non-zero exponential function which is equal to its derivative, as we want to show, and this will show the existence of the special number e. In order to do this, let's look at the integral of 1 over x. Define f of x to be the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. As we expect, this is going to be the this is going to be the inverse of the exponential function, which we want to prove exists. First, in order to define an inverse, we have to show that f is invertible. That is, f is one to one and onto. Let's show that f of x is one to one. We must show that if some values are equal, say a and b, f of a is equal to a, f of b, we want to prove that a is equal to b. Let's suppose that f of a is equal to f of b. Then the integral from 1 over 1 to a of 1 over t dt is equal to 1 over b or 1 to b of 1 over t dt. Subtracting the integral over, we get that 0 is equal to the integral from a to b of 1 over t dt. Notice that if b is the bigger of the two, we must have that 1 over t is greater than or equal to 1 over b. But this means that this integral is greater than or equal to b minus a over b for some positive value of b. This means that since this is equal to 0, we have that a is equal to b. Next, we will prove that f of x is on to. That is, that if we take the values between 0 to infinity, non-inclusive, they will be able to go to every value in the real numbers between negative infinity to positive infinity. Since f of x is the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, notice that this is of the form of the integral of 1 over t the p, with p equal to 1. This is, one of the, this is a special integral because we know that as we go to infinity, this integral will, ex will blow up and be approach infinity. But at the same time, if we go from 0 to 1, this will also approach infinity. This means that our integral, as it's going from 1 to 0 of 1 over t dt, is going to go from negative infinity, or approaching negative infinity, and as it approaches infinity, it will increase, because this is positive, until we reach infinity. So therefore, we'll be able to reach all the values. As a visual, if we look at the function 1 over x, we can see that at x equals 1, as we increase, we go from 0 to a, fun to a value which we know will go to infinity. However, if we go backward to 0, then this will be negative, and we'll approach negative infinity. Therefore, we know that the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt is going to be invertible from 0 to infinity onto negative infinity to infinity. So we have an inverse function which goes from negative infinity to infinity to zero to infinity. Now that we know about this inverse function, let's take a look to see what we can be able to find. Like before, we can take the inverse function and stick in this function in order to get itself. We can try taking the derivative of this in order to calculate what the derivative of this inverse function might be. Since f of x was defined as the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, we get that the derivative of it by the fundamental theorem of calculus must be 1 over t. So our derivative of this function will end up being the derivative of f inverse of f of x times the derivative of f of x, and that will be equal to 1. Applying what we know, we get that f inverse prime of f of x will be equal to 1 over 1 over x, which is x. However, this matches up with our previous equation, or f inverse of f of x is equal to x. Therefore, f inverse of f of x is equal to its derivative along those values. Since f of x has a range of all the real numbers, 
We can substitute y equals f of x for any real number, and we get that f inverse of y is equal to f inverse prime of y. Therefore, this function is equal to its own derivative, and must be in our special set of functions f that are equal to their own derivatives. Finally, we'll use this information in order to prove that e to the x exists. Notice that f of, z, f of 1 is equal to the integral of 1 to 1 of 1 over t t, which is equal to 0. So, the inverse function of 0 is equal to 1. In particular, that means that our inverse function is not the 0 function, and we have proven that there does, so therefore, this function must be an exponential function which we'll call e to the x. And so we have proven that there is a function e to the x that is non-zero, that is equal to its own derivative, and furthermore, that e is greater than one. Now that we've proven that e to the x exists, we can now com connect our number e to one of the many de definitions of it. If we look at the fact that its inverse function the natural log of x is equal to the integral of 1 to x of 1 over t dt, we find, finally, that the natural log of e, which is equal to 1, is equal to the integral from 1 to e of 1 over t dt, thus proving one of the other definitions that this integral is equal to 1. In the next video, we'll be going over some of the other definitions of e, in particular, showing that it is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity, of 1 plus 1 over n to the n, and showing that it is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. We'll prove that e to the x is equal to its Taylor series. And finally, we will compute an approximation for the value of e and show that it starts with 2.71, as we expect. Thanks for watching.